Welcome back to Mackenzie Woodworking, the Wine Barrel Patio Bar. So I hope you followed along on the uh, other two episodes of this build. This is number three in the completion. So this is uh, where we're going. This is the completed barrel I'm giving you a peek at. And uh, you can see how it uh, turned out. So what we've got here is our jig on top of the barrel and this is what we'll be using to cut off the top of the barrel. You can see it's uh, stable and uh, lays across the barrel. And I've got videos on the wine barrel jig so if you want to build one of these you can uh, check that out. So here we are inside and I just have the jig on top. Um, what I do is I sand the uh, top with a uh, mini grinder, just take off any wood that's protruding above the rim sometimes. Uh, the barrels will swell and it'll be up because you want the jig to run smooth all the way around along the barrel. So, so just take a, a sander and uh, sand the top of it for so smooth. What I've also done too is on the underside of this I put packing tape. Uh, I just put a couple of layers of packing tape there so that it uh, glides along nicely. Uh, the packing tape will just give you a nice smooth run. And I've got some wedges there you can see. So as I go along and cut I'll just put in some door shims. And that's what these are but if you don't have door shims around the shop you can just cut some wooden wedges. I use these vinyl ones because um, we use them for a lot of stuff around the shop. And they're durable and they've got a little notches on them to keep them in place. So there we go. I'm just following all the way along and uh, I'll uh, cut this off. And uh, what the door shims do, it keeps the top of the barrel elevated so it doesn't come down on top of your saw blade and uh, you don't gum up or tear up the uh, top. So uh, and you see this is almost a real-time cut and it only takes about a minute to cut off the top and it does a really good job nice smooth cut and once I get this off I'll just uh, take some sandpaper and aeris the edge a bit soften it up but you can see that it uh, cut off pretty good there's our apron that's been going around our barrel uh, so we'll just uh, be finished sanding that and what I'm doing here is just putting a brass screw on the inside that's the front and then I'll put another screw in the front of the barrel so that's a reference point and there's the apron I've uh, fitted the apron on and uh, to make sure that it's uh, all stable and I've marked uh, where it's going to sit on the barrel and then we'll take that off and we'll put some uh, pocket hole screws on the underside and we're just going to try the top here make sure everything's fitting before we start fastening the rest of the product and I'll just uh, match up the um, barrel staves and put a mark on the back there uh, center mark uh, where I want it to be because we'll be putting a plate for our hinges uh, supporting plate and I want that to be nice and square to it so that just gives you a look of what we've got so far so this is the shelf that we going on the inside. I just uh, gang glued this together and I've used some biscuits to join it. And the glue I've used is Type On 3. Uh, it's an exterior uh, grade waterproof glue. And that's just a rough glue up. And there's the backer block. So what I do is I tack two a piece of the board together. I've used one inch fur clear. Uh, it's a nice solid wood and no knots. I just put some reference marks on the outside where I want it to lie and I'll just draw a radius. I actually drew on the inside and the outside but I was just showing you the inside one and then I'll put it back on and draw it off. So I'll take that over to the bandsaw and I'll just cut the angle that I need it. Uh, this high on the barrel, it's only about five degrees. So there's the insert, so that's the shelf that's going on the inside and I figured out where it's going to land. So I measured down about nine inches and measured the radius and I just made a circle. Before I cut it out, what I do is I cut a story stick that's the exact same size as my shelf 
and you can see from side to side and then I'll take that to the barrel and I'll move it along uh, in the same area where I plan on putting the shelf to make sure that it fits in and if it has to be adjusted uh, either undersized or oversized I can make those adjustments as needed but it seemed to be pretty good so there's the cutout it's round and I've laid a couple of boards underneath uh, where I want the supporting boards to be and I'll just draw out the angle there and then I've uh, taken them over to the bandsaw as well and cut them off on the ends so they're the same radius as the barrels I just have a uh, portable uh, pocket hole cutter here I'm just lining it up where I'm gonna put the holes and this is how I'm gonna fasten these to the inside of the barrel this is a um, a quick way of doing it and I didn't want to run any screws on the outside of the barrel so whenever I install these I'll pull them tight and then I'll slacken them off about an eighth of an inch both screw just showing you the underside here I just uh, glue on a bit of uh, sandpaper on the jig there so it doesn't slide around when I'm using it so uh, there's the insert there's a shelf all cut and sand it and the supporting boards so here we are and I'll get these all in and then I'll uh, go back with a screwdriver and just slacken them off a bit and the reason I'm slacking them off is to allow the barrel to expand and contract uh, they'll be able to move in the pocket back and forth so as the barrel wants to shrink and it wants to expand it's not going to rip out the screws so I just used a board, a supporting board, to mark my height. And there I have the two of them in. And now I'll just fit in the shelf. Um, because the sh shelf that's going in is going down towards the center of the barrel, and the barrel is wider than the top, the shelf has to be cut in half to get it in because it's bigger than the opening. So I just cut it on a 45 right down the center. and. Uh, I just used a, uh, a, sh a slide that I have in the shop that I use and uh, we'll try that. Here's your supporting uh, pieces for the shelf and they, you, know, you can see I just have a 45 degree angle and that just helps uh, support the two shelves when they go together but uh, they go in quite nice and tight uh, this way. And I just drop that down and you can see it just lays on top and that joint just disappears. And then I'll just um, line up the shelf to the very front of the barrel. I'll bring down the marks that I've got on top. You can see I've got a little pencil mark there. And that's the center of the door. And what I'll do is I'll give this a coat too. And what I use on the Everything, everything in the inside of the barrel, if I've coated, um, what I'll use is mineral oil. The same oil that you'd use on cutting boards. It's food safe and it's, there's no smell that comes off it. So there it is, it's coated with mineral oil. And now these are the brackets. So I've cut these and these will be going along the, uh, the barrel and the barrel top. And I've got them marked uh, uh, top and bottom. And I've laid them, laid up my hinge plates uh, where the hinge plates are going to go. And I've uh, just using a router here with a straight bit on a three eight straight bit to uh, and get rid of uh, most of the waste wood for the hinge plate insert. There we are. You notice I painted the uh, hinge plates now flat black and. Uh, just sizing them in. You want to get those in nice and tight. And what I ha have too is on these, I put a center mark on them so the two of them will marry them up. And there's a mark on the uh, bottom side of this. Uh, and what I use is some hot milk glue. Uh, and I just mounted the, uh, the plate to the barrel with some hot milk glue and now we're running some countersink holes into the plate. These extensions are great for something like this. They're great for a low angle. If you're drilling somewhere or if you can't reach something, uh, they come in several lengths. So we'll just fasten that in with some porcelain screws 
And uh, if you don't have porcelain screws, stainless steel screws will work. Uh, definitely something that's going to be uh, coated for the outside. Uh, that's not going to rust on you. And pre-drill it. You don't want this plate cracking. Um, these lids are quite heavy, so you want it to be secure. You don't want it to uh, break off on you or snap off the hinges. So here I am just mounting the the back plate. Uh, this is the bottom. And you see uh, it's all cut out, uh, ready for the hinges to go on. And I've done the same thing. I've just used hot melt glue and I've just clamped that on for a second for it to set. Uh, you'll notice that it's perfectly parallel from the front to the back of the barrel. What I, I've used is a straight edge on top of the barrel and I've brought the plate up to it and so that it's uh, flat across the top. You don't want it twisted up or down. Uh, it's going to hamper the hinge. You want it to flow freely. Just give me a shot of, I found a leather handle for the barrel lid and I'm going to mount that. Just put a piece of copper in the, in the ends here. Uh, I'm drilling some four inch holes. Uh, this will be for the bottles to insert into on the back of the barrel. Uh, we don't want the balls, bottles falling over or anything inside the barrel. And then what I'll do is just cut a plywood shelf three inches below this when we mount it inside the barrel. So this is the underside of the skirt and uh, we're just using a double hole here for the uh, uh, pocket screws and uh, we'll just drill a couple of these and uh, I put these at uh, four different spots in the barrel. Uh, they're basically just to stop it from being uh, pulled up or tilted off. Uh, yeah. I'm not doing it for strength because it fits tight to the barrel. So there it is there. We've uh, mounted it on, onto the barrel. And as you can see it fits quite snugly because we trimmed it up to fit perfectly in the barrel and uh, you can see the bottom door there. I have a, I installed a slide bolt hinge. There's a handle on top and uh, Windsor hot plywood hat. Thank you again Windsor plywood su for supplying me with all the uh, materials and the barrels and everything I need to bring this project to you guys. So check out Windsor Plywood. There's the inside of the barrel and there's the outside again. You see you know, what I've done is just cut a piece of leather for a loop and uh, legs are painted black and there's the the apron around the outside and uh, lots of room for your drinks to sit on and whatever you have there and there's a nice bucket there with some wob wobbly pops in it and uh, I'll give you a shot in the inside. You can see the lid on the back there and I've got a, a chain that I put a couple of big hoops into. Uh, you're you're going to want to use a nice big eye ring uh, that's going to support the lid is quite heavy. So there's the bottles going into the hole. And like I said, I installed a uh, plywood shelf below this and that's three inches below. So when the bottles go into the holes, they actually drop down three inches and they'll clear the lid as well. Plus stops the bottles from falling over. Got some Cuban cigars there. A friend of mine just got back from Cuba and brought me back a box of cigars. There's the insert, uh, the inside. I uh, opted not to put in a uh, wine rack uh, because uh, there's a lot of storage in there. You can put your olives in there for a mar martini night or, or you can hide the good booze if uh, family mem members come over to visit you for a barbecue. And that just gives you a look at it all. I hope you have liked this project. Uh, it came out really good and I uh, hope that you uh, follow along. I've got some really interesting projects coming up. And uh, if you have any questions of this, please send me an email off. And uh, subscribe and, and like. Uh, I have some more projects coming up. Thank you.